Sarah Jane here for Studio B. This short talk is called Even-Mindedness Amidst Uncertainty. We have all heard the saying, life is what happens when you're making other plans. So true. To me, this points to how we are often working against change rather than working with it. And we are understandably uncomfortable with change and uncertainty because that's how we humans are wired. Neuroscientists have identified something called the negativity bias. You may have heard the story of walking down a path and seeing a stick, but at first thinking it's a snake and there needing to be a beat or two of time before one settles down and realizes it's a stick. And that, that story illustrates that our brain is wired to think the worst of situations first. And this is merely a survival mechanism. And um, it means that we are often on alert, vigilant, when in unfamiliar territory. I went out to dinner last night, here's a story for you, with a colleague who said that her husband would be changing office locations. And her daughter, who was with us, uh, took this news um, really hard. She was upset and I thought, hmm, what is it about that office that she must love so much? There must be a nook where she's done her homework or maybe a snack refrigerator. And then I thought, wow, well, this really illustrates how we are when we first hear that something unfamiliar is upon us. Because there very well could be a, an entire game room in the new office. But it is so human to not um, think about possibility first. First, we are pitted against the idea of change. Indeed, taking change as it comes, uh, feeling comfortable with uncertainty, requires energy and interest and effort, a willingness to uh, not know, and a sense of trust. And these things must be cultivated, particularly because we are biased toward the negative. A key quality that supports these attitudes or this ability to not go negative first is equanimity. Equanimity is even-mindedness, composure. Do you know someone who is steady in all situations? Whose response to news, even bad news, seems to be measured and reasonable? they are exuding equanimity. Equanimity is not a cool and distant quality. It combines the wisdom of understanding with the openness and inclusivity of compassion. Under its influence, we are balanced and open, able to be with, rather than given to the compulsion to react against things as they are, even when we don't prefer them. So this is not about avoiding engaging in life. I should say um, equanimity is not about not taking action. It's about being measured enough so that when we take action, our action can be skillful and effective. A useful inquiry I drop in when something unexpected has occurred and I feel off is how am I holding this? And just asking this question seems to create a shift in how things feel. I once heard teacher Noliwe Alexander give a talk on equanimity, and she likened 
cultivating equanimity to learning to love what is. I just thought that was beautiful. She, she used these words in her talk to describe equanimity. This is the way it is. It's like this now. May I accept things exactly as they are, even if I want them to be different. May I see through the eyes of wisdom my life and world as it is. May I fall in love with life just as it is. Falling in love with what is. Bringing ourselves back to our collective life. And she noted this takes practice and courage and we all have it in us. Sometimes it's okay to take the sting of an unwanted situation, an unwanted change, not as a starting signal, not as a call to vigilance, um, not as a call to take action against something that is going awry, but simply as a signal that we've contacted the flow of life. Here it is. It's a call to presence. How am I holding this? Pima Chodron, a much loved Buddhist teacher, gives these instructions, three instructions for moments like this. Number one, be fully present. Number two, feel the feelings. And number three, Engage in the next moment without an agenda. So I really love how she talks about being with change, so I'll share a bit more. She says, we must be honest with ourselves and kind. And this begins with a willingness to stay present with whatever you experience as uneasiness. She writes, as these feelings arise, rather than running away, you lean into them. Instead of trying to get rid of thoughts and feelings, you become curious about them. As you become accustomed to experiencing sen sensation free of interpretation, you will come to understand that contacting the fundamental ambiguity of being human provides a precious opportunity. The opportunity to be with life just as it is, the opportunity to experience the freedom of life without a storyline. So indeed, that's my wish for you, that at moments, um, rather than feeling called to react, um, you can feel awakened and willing to move with life, dropping a bit of the personal story. Thanks.